Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to talk about the is instance built in Python function. Well, I hope you're having a fantastic 2024. Let's get started. So here is the Python page where we have our is instance built in functions. And if we click this description, you can see that it says return true if the object argument is an instance of the class. And depending on how you may have come into Python, you may not have used this function before. And so rather than trying to drag through this description, let me just show you a few examples. I think the use cases will be quite intuitive once you see it in this notebook. And so let's begin. Let's create a variable called var and set that equal to five. And so we know the data type for this five is integer. And we can use the is instance built in function. We don't need to import anything. And we can input var and we then pass in the type or the instance we want to evaluate against. And so in this case, let's set this equal to int. And so we are essentially going to return a Boolean where we evaluate if the variable five is an integer. Now we can update this and change this to float and we see that it returns a false. And so with this, we can do quite a bit because we now have a way to assess the data type of our variable and use this to control the flow. Now, one thing that's also pretty interesting is that you can pass in a list of variables. So we could pass in float or int and it will return true because this five is one of float or int. But let's copy this and update our variable to be the string five. Let's paste this below, run this again, and you see that now that var is this string object, we are now returning false as a string is not included in the instance that we are evaluating against. And now if we update this to include string, this returns true or if we just were to only look at string, this is again, true. And now one of the other tweaks we can make is to now have a list, which is a different data type, even though this is a list with one object, one string object in it, we are not evaluating for a list. And so if we were to add a list to our objects, we now have this flexibility as well, which could be good because depending on the way you build your functions or the way you incorporate this, you can look for a string, a single string or a list of string objects and so we can continue to move through this. And so I hope this video was useful. There's a lot we can do with this instance data type. I've used this in a number of videos to help control the flow of my for loops or some of the functions that I've made in the course of some of the larger projects. In any case, I hope to see you in the next video. Peace.